The big IH symbol is part of the Australian road scene these days. In Australia's three million square miles of land area, there are extremes of climate and terrain. But wherever trucking work is done, an international is prominently on the job. And there's plenty of work in the transport field these days, for since the war, Australia has ranked third to the USA and Canada in the number of motor vehicles per head of population, and first in the number of commercial registrations. The performance and quality of the international is widely known. But how many know of the planning and research that goes on before a truck reaches the market? Home of manufacture of the wide range of international trucks is at Dandenong, 20 miles from Melbourne. In open surroundings, IH has installed over a million pounds worth of plant and equipment. And these modern buildings are a landmark for miles around. Now other large firms have followed IH's example to move from overcrowded city areas. And Dandenong's future as a thriving industrial centre is assured. Today out of these gates comes a steady stream of Australian built vehicles ranging from 12 to 1500 weight utilities to medium heavy duty trucks of 5 to 6 ton capacity or 11 tons haulage capacity when fitted with semi trailers as well as the big heavy duty job. Direct from the final assembly line they are delivered to their destination by the time saving picker back drive away system. But behind all this achievement is the story of research and proving. And here at Dandenong is located one of the vital groups of this organization, the engineering test fleet. These stock production units are chosen at random from the assembly line and permanently assigned to the test fleet, whose task it is to submit them to a series of detailed trials designed to prove every component. After daily maintenance, the crews are briefed. Then it's out onto the open road for hour after hour of trial by torture. Careful planning goes into these road tests. Every type of road surface is traversed from the smooth bitumen of highways to the vicious clay corrugations of an outback track. The average truck would not encounter such continuously brutal treatment in its lifetime, but Australian conditions call for a tough vehicle. And this is the way International makes sure it can provide the operator with just that. grade and the load goes on. Testing cooling system and transmission parts. Concrete blocks are carried to simulate a full load while the wind board by increasing wind resistance imposes an additional strain on the engine.
50 miles of this will probe any weaknesses in air cleaners or cab ventilation. Australia has thousands of miles of rutted and corrugated back roads like these, so the fleet spends hundreds of hours on them, testing sheet metal mountings, frames, steering and chassis springs. Everything takes a pounding here, but it's all part of the painstaking process of designing better trucks. Here, just to prove that IH engineers have succeeded in producing a vehicle which will iron out the worst ruts, watch the cab steadiness in slow motion. Turning onto the main highway, and carefully trained drivers obey every rule of the road. To thoroughly test engine power and economy, thousands of miles of routine running must be clocked up, day and night and in all weathers. And here, Victoria provides the ideal testing ground with its sudden changes from sunshine to sleep. The splash test tries the seeding of transmission, propeller shaft and pinion bearings, as well as that of the cab itself. Round the clock, the test fleet keeps its trucks rolling through fog and on the dirtiest of nights to check driver visibility and headlight efficiency. While general testing goes on, individual units are submitted to a number of detailed torture tests for specific quality control. Here, an overloaded truck is deliberately bogged in heavy sand. A new rear axle is fitted. The straight chalk line will later help to show the amount of twist. With the engine at 3,000 revolutions, the driver suddenly slips his foot from the clutch. It engages with a terrific joke. Time and time again it's repeated. The question is, how much of this abuse will a rear axle take? After 100 applications, first check on the chalk line shows little twist. A relief engineer driver stands by and counts the number of these crash applications. axle begins to show fatigues as the crash engagements mount into the hundreds. more than a thousand tries, the axle at last breaks. This cruel test not only proves the axle, but engine, clutch, transmission, propeller shaft and differential. In fact, every part involved in the line of drive. It's been an exhausting test for the drivers who are relieved every 20 minutes. particularly grueling test is the figure eight test in which the truck is equipped with outrigger wheels to permit higher speeds and sharper turns without danger of capsizing. 
This is a final check to prove that design and quality of steering knuckles, steering system, wheel bearings and king pins are up to international harvester high standards. So arduous is this exercise, the drivers must be changed periodically. A special test is also used to prove the effective performance, safety and long life of the entire braking mechanism. A recording fifth wheel is attached to the test truck and connected to these instruments inside the cab. The decelerometer indicates slow uprate. This instrument, brake pedal pressure. And this, hydraulic brake line pressure. While this shows the stopping distance. These are multi-purpose tests, revealing the quality of brake linings and their uniformity of wear, proving they'll be safe brakes through their normal life expectancy. And they act as a check on every part of the important braking system to ensure that there is a, a safe balance between pedal pressure and stopping rate under full load condition. In their works at Geelong, International Harvester maintains an amateur test house where trucks and tractor engines of all types are submitted to tests for efficiency and to obtain detailed performance figures. The engines are coupled to and drive an electric generator similar to those in an electrical power station. By increasing the number of resistors in use, the load on the engine can be increased. The importance of these tests is that actual day-to-day -day engine running loads encountered in all types of truck operations can be simulated under laboratory conditions. Thus the truck engineers can study the engine in detail, developing performance curves. They are unable to exhaustively test any modification before it is submitted to road or field testing. Here, the engineer is carrying out a fuel consumption test with a load on the test engine comparative to a fully loaded five to six ton truck operating at high speed. Back at Dandenong, under open air conditions, test engines are submitted to further torture. Here, the accent is on endurance and hours of running at speeds of up to 4,000 revolutions can be guaranteed to probe any potential weakness in engine components. But while these special tests in Sandpit, on the road and in the workshop continue, the round-the-clock teams still maintain the premeditated torture of the general test fleet on other courses. One of the most rugged of these is affectionately called the twist course, conducted wherever the roughest tracks crossed with gullies and washaways can be found. For well, these conditions may be found in many places of our widespread outback. <laughs> Tests on the twist course are primarily to prove control and function of steering mechanism, clutch and brakes and operating clearances of sheet metal. Chassis weaving is repeated time and again. This torture also proves the strength and flexibility of engine mountings, sheet metal mountings, chassis and frame. These are not dramatized versions of tests carried out to create a Roman holiday for the roving cameraman. They are continuous, rigorous tests carried out throughout the year on experimental and standard units as part of a, a carefully planned program to prove every component in vehicles in every range manufactured by the company. The close cooperation between International Harvesters Engineering and manufacturing groups and their suppliers ensures that the Australian built internationals are ideally suited and proven for Australian conditions. And when tested and proved, New developments for Australian trucking operations can be speedily brought into manufacture at International Harvester's Dandenong Works. Back 
from a day's work over the grueling test courses, the vehicles of the test fleet will now be taken over by the afternoon shift. On the farm, international utility owners know their vehicle has the ruggedness and power for every purpose. For the tradesmen, the steel-bodied pickup with its direct, easy steering and comfort vision cab supplies the answer. In the heavy, rugged transport class for timber haulage and for other tough demands, the international operator knows he has the truck with power and durability to climb anywhere and safety under all conditions. In the gravel quarry, with its heavy, wearing loads, the tip truck operator chooses international because of its proven reliability. For the hard work of gravel carting requires top performance to get the payload from quarry to dump. In city deliveries, international owners get nippy getaway and manoeuvrability that makes this Australian built van the ideal choice. A fully loaded international makes light work of the steep climb out of the quarry. Among these rough quarry tracks are the steepest grades to be found wherever trucks operate. For the fisherman, the golfer or countryman, here is the vehicle for work and pleasure. At home on the smoothest road or the roughest bush track. The versatile Dandenong models are applicable to all body types for every kind of job. For every light job on the farm, the AR110 series has proven its worth. Springs and body mountings have been designed for work on the land. Here is passenger car comfort in the workaday field, where the hauling fodder, farm supplies or animals. And so another truck rolls off the Dandenong Works assembly line, a model proved by thousands of hours testing on the roads and in the laboratories. International, designed for every Australian operating condition, the result of years of practical testing and proving for the needs of road transport in this country.